Welcome, everybody, to the Citrine Palace. Again, it's for Vane and Ella. Hey, everybody. Yes. <laughs> and this package came yesterday. Or, like, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. yeah, a lot of time has passed since yesterday. This package came yesterday, and it says it's from Pamela Chen, and I think that that's the name of the person who did the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. So I'm 99% sure that this is my Crystal Unicorn Tarot. And I was like, I almost opened it, especially because there's like a little tear in here that I was like, oh, I'll just feel it and look a little bit. But I didn't. Gold Star stickers. Yeah, and then I was carrying it upstairs, and then Ella mysteriously came home, and I was like, oh, well, obviously I'm supposed to open this with you. So here we are today. <laughs> And I think we're going to have to open the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. Um, would you like to do the honors? No, actually, I feel like it should be you. Okay. We always, we got our trusty mermaid knife. This is like my, my unboxing knife now. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's totally. It says <laughs> Luna Prosperity on the side. And I was like, I didn't order a Luna Prosperity Tarot. But I think that's the name of her... Uh, I think she does, like, essential oils or something, and that, I don't know, man. I don't know. I just, Ooh. crystals, unicorns, tarot, I was sold. I didn't need to know anything else. The and, in fact, I'm going to be. I noticed. I'm sorry. I have say? to imagine sparkle manifest. Is that what it says up there? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to be totally honest. Um, I did, you know, I looked at the card images that were publicized for this deck, and I was a little bit, like, okay, another boring Rider weight clone. And then I was a lot like, but crystals and unicorns and tarot. And so here we are. And I wasn't like, you know, it wasn't ridiculous. This is not like a $50 deck or a $100 deck. This is like, uh, I think, I don't think I paid more than $30 for it. I don't know. I'll link things below. Ooh. Touchy. Oh. It's like nice matte. It's very good texture. Okay. It says on the bottom, $29 US, 42 Canadian. So I guess if you want it now, it's $29 US. Oh. <laughs> it's too much. It's just... Oh. What is it? What is it? You guys get to see it first. That's how it goes. A Guide to Crystal Unicorn Tarot. Ooh. Okay. It's tiny, but it's... Oh, it's oh, so look, cute. What? A little color ah! book in the back. <laughs> no, it's like... But I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, it's a coloring book. But it's just got, like, the illustrations throughout it are just, like, really cute and definitely colorable. And so... I feel like... I'm I don't know color. if it was intended to be a coloring book, but I'm going to color it. Maybe you should color some of it, too. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so each, we're just gonna look at the book first, because that's what was on top. So each card has just a little bitty section. Um, we'll read one of the cards later, because we'll pull it, and we'll see what we get, and then we'll go through the book a little more. Bam, that's our first look at the book. I like what's oh on top. Oh my god. It's so pink. <laughs> it's the, it's the pinkest. <gasps> Guys, you're gonna love the backs. Dude. Just wait. They get to see the Ace of Cups before they even see the back. Wow, though. Like, check that out. Check that out. Yeah. Oh, man. This is definitely a Rider weight clone. Okay, but check this out. Look, it's a little fucking unicorn hoof holding the thing instead of a hand. That's... <laughs> Like, who did this? I also just, like, really appreciate that the Ace of Cups was on top. I feel like most I decks I've opened that too. start with the Major Arcana, usually, from what I've That's experienced. That's true. That's true. Yeah, and when we pulled the... It was Pentacles on the back of the Mary deck, which mm -hmm. I still have not uploaded the Mysteries of Mary um, unboxing. So, okay. Oh. We'll just... Okay, well, I, these... Like, all the Cups cards are my favorite cards, so we'll just show you the two... Here, hold hold some of these though. Yeah, let's like, see. I'm just the but we gotta show them the three too though. Oh, of course. But this paper is really nice, 
And we're going to do, you know, we're going to do our standard thing where we'll look at some of the cards and then we'll <sighs> shuffle them. Here's our King of Pentacles. He's wearing a coat of grapes or something like that. I like it. This I dig is it. totally my favorite <laughs> Four of Cups I have ever seen. <laughs> So I haven't, I didn't really read about the, how the crystals are involved. Um, I think it's like each major has a crystal and then each suit has a crystal. Um, but it's not very clear to me. So we'll have to read about it. He's got a little we'll crystal make sure on his we hindquarters. Read at least one major and one, yeah, most of them do. Like they're like fucking my little crystal ponies <laughs> with their... I'm sorry, I do curse too much. <laughs> this Four of Wands, though, it's totally a clone deck. It's totally a clone deck, but you know what? Oh, I buy it. My goodness. I bought Look it. At this. I paid for it. Little, oh. Little unicorn That's mermaid That's super, creatures. like, elegant and regal. Oh, they're so Here's cute. the Ace of Wands. I'm, 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 I think these aces are hilarious with the little hoof. I think that's, that's just, like, yeah. too much for me. <laughs> I love it. Too much in a good way. Oh, Queen of Swords. I love the unicorns and the thrones. That's maybe actually my favorite part. The unicorns and the thrones are... It's just... It's like they're way more adorable than the court cards. Because it's like... How does a unicorn sit in a throne? Well, like this, guys. That's how. Ooh, check out those pomegranates. Oh my god. I'm gonna show them the Empress though. Look at this, look at her, look at her star crown and her flower. And is that like an emerald or something? I don't know, we're gonna have to find out. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful though. The lovers with a giant Honka rose quartz. Check that out. These are so cute. Like I'm not even mad that it's a clone. They're pretty I'm freaking not, adorable. Cause it's so cute. And the back, like I'm just gonna show you the backs again because look at those like mm -hmm. like I just want to do a photo shoot this th this is the sort of deck that just makes me want to do photo shoots can we do like a pastel tea party photo a shoot a pastel like... unicorn tea party yes. tea and tarot tea party yeah yes. yeah we can and we should and we will and yeah okay we got to see string that the lion one. the unicorn okay. this is the th this is England's card here or the United Kingdom is it England that's the lion and the unicorn or is it the whole United Kingdom I'm actually not sure. I don't know either. But we got a lion and a unicorn here. That's that's kind of cool. I didn't think about that. But that's a, that's the classic combination in it. <laughs> and where's the hanged man? we got to see the hanged man. Ooh, I like oh, the wheel. Yeah. Ooh. I really <gasps> like the wheel. Oh. The hanged unicorn. <laughs> I love it so much. Yes. Ooh. Death is interesting. Death is interesting. It's like... <laughs> it's like it's missing the death character, except the unicorn is the death character. Okay, look, I gotta show y'all the devil, too. <laughs> Ooh, temperance. Oh, really... oh my god, it's in its mouth! Guys, how good is this? How good is this? Okay, we gotta just stop showing them all the cards. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to shuffle. I just really love the colors. Okay. And this deck. I love it too. What? So, okay. So, I like to ask new decks. Oh my god. This deck is so coming on Morning Ritual tomorrow. You need this? Uh, yeah, I do. How'd you know? We're not reading reversals today. I don't know if I'll ever read reversals with this unicorn deck. Maybe I will. It's just, it's really cute. I'm not going to bend these cards though. They're too, the, the paper stock is like legit nice. Like, I don't know how to... I was not expecting this nice paper stock for a twenty nine dollar deck. Um, oh, they're so, I'm not over the backs. I'm not. They're so pretty. Introduction. Once upon a tarot time, in a land full of rainbows and gemstones, hidden from the naked eye in a magical forest, lived a band of crystal unicorns. The only way to see and connect with these magical creatures is with your intuition and awareness. As you start connecting, you will hear the faint sound of hooves tapping along the lush green floor of the forest. Keep your focus, and you might be lucky enough to catch a glimpse of a sparkle from their enchanted crystal horns. As if hearing your inner questions, the unicorns look up in unison. To hear their answer, all you need is to take this deck of cards and turn one over. 
See what wisdom and guidance the rainbow brings you from the forest of the crystal unicorns. Then there's a little section on what is tarot, which we're not going to read because we already know what tarot is. Preparing your cards. How to use the cards. Oh, okay. Oh, so does. every major arcana has a different crystal. Major arcana card has a different crystal. So, um, okay, the lovers. I was wrong. Pardon me for just expecting it to be rose quartz. It's morganite. Oh, really? Which is, yeah, isn't that like pink aquamarine, basically? I yes. Mean, that's one I'm actually not very familiar with, it's but pink that sounds like something. I it's, like uh, I dig it. I like it. I have a piece or two. Um, yeah. I totally was thinking rose quartz, too, though. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like the obvious choice, but... The I something I noticed is that like if you're if you're if it's really necessary to you that the crystals look like what they are, this might not be your deck. Um like we've got a cabochon in this one, maybe it looks like Labradorite or Moonstone. I don't know. I'm it's, sure we'll find out. What does it say? Moonstone. moonstone. It's totally moon. Which I feel like. See, makes but I'm like sense. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But I don't know. To me, that doesn't look like Moonstone. And I'm trying to give an honest review here. And so as much as I'll say that I love this, which is true, like, that doesn't look like I wouldn't just be able to tell that that was Moonstone by looking at it. I certainly wasn't able to tell that this was Morganite by looking at it. I will say, though, that I did, like, feel like that was Moonstone. It I should be Moonstone because the High Priestess. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess that's fair. Also, I kind of have a piece of Moonstone that sort of looks like that, so that could be part that's of why. Fair. See, I have a piece of Labradorite that kind of looks ah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> My black Moonstone looks a little like that. Mm-hmm. What's the crystal? I'm going to find out what this crystal is here on Temperance because I dig it. It looks like flame quartz. It does. But let's see. Rainbow amethyst. So I guess rainbow or amethyst, which I've really been wanting a piece of. Maybe this is my omen. <laughs> I'll just take anything of an omen if it's an omen for a crystal that I want. Um, okay, now yeah. that we've flipped all these back over again. Okay, wait. Well, I want to see the suits. Um, okay, so wands... Are smoky quartz okay and apparently earth maybe um, cups are rose quartz and water swords are amethyst and air and pentacles Citrine. This is really weird, man. It's it's pentacles is citrine, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't actually mention any of the elements with pentacles. In my experience, pentacles are usually earth and wands are usually fire. But it says the wands govern the energy of movement and growth and are aligned with the earthy energy of the smoky quartz crystal. I don't even feel like smoky quartz is. I like I feel like smoky quartz is more fiery than earthy. I disagree on some of the tarot academia in this book, but I don't care. I don't use books for Rider Waite style decks anyway, usually, so that's not going to be a big deal. I'm, like, the only thing that I'm, that I know, I will, we're going to not, I'm not going to count my books before they hatch. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not going to judge it before we try to yeah, actually read with give it. Give it a fair shot. The yeah, we'll give it a fair shot. It might, because I didn't actually read, like, any of the card interpretations. I'm just being all judgy so but that's what you're supposed to do in a review slash first impression like you're supposed to give your I mean you're not supposed to be judgy but like give your opinion your your yeah. thoughts feelings yeah. yeah and these are some of my thoughts and feelings do you want to shuffle and pull or do you want me to shuffle and pull or do you want me to shuffle and you can cut or um something I really like feel that. like holding them right now okay, so I cool. guess I will shuffle so we're gonna ask because this is just what we do with new decks um oh, yeah, what I this can... deck has to teach us and I say us because you know I bring all my decks on morning ritual and you know that all my decks at some point if they're good are working decks and so if you ever purchase a reading from me and I consider this to be a working deck which I suspect I will because it's a right away clone and I love right away um then like you can get a reading with this deck and so when I say what does this deck have to teach us that's what I mean not just me and Ella not just me but all of us. Enjoy but that. this deck specifically, yes, I would, and I would like to cut it there. Can I flip it? Mm -hmm. Oh. 
We got the Seven of Cups. So this is actually, so what I see in that, this has been coming up, well, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I don't know if it's been coming up a lot for me lately. But what I see in this is that it's going to teach us to, to manifest and to believe in in our in our because that to me the seven of cups is about reaching into the future to create the it's illusions in a sense but it's illusions because they're potential futures and they're like potential treasures in the future and it's like none of them are real the most real one is the one that you can't tell what it is because it's covered up but any of them could be real in the future but you have to actually uh, you have to sacrifice all of the other ones essentially to pick one and manifest it. But so to me the the seven of cups is about, it's not about, or it doesn't necessarily depict the process of manifesting, but it depicts the process of imagining what you will manifest and of holding those images in your mind. And at least that's my, my experience of the seven of cups and that makes a lot of sense for a unicorn deck also i feel like oh my god that's what unicorns have always taught me <laughs> by always i mean since that day that we went to the blue hangar and we were like <laughs> i haven't told this story are you serious yeah i haven't told this story on youtube you want to tell this no i want to hear your interpretation of it <laughs> okay fill in details if i if i leave holes okay um so we were like let's do a little manifestation experiment or like you know i mean we're always doing manifestation experiments as in true. we're always manifesting but we wrote a list of things that we were looking for at the blue hangar which is a, a goodwill outlet here in around town ish and uh, by goodwill outlet i mean like usually dollar 39 a pound furniture is 99 cents a piece that sort of thing. But everything is like just in giant bins. And yeah. It's like a big treasure hunt. You have to really look for things. It's like, like, I'm gonna be real, it's gross, but we have a washing machine. So <laughs> that's fine. Um, I did get a rash there once. Anyhow, we wrote a long list of things that we were looking for. And I mean, like, it got a little ridiculous. Like, we put unicorns on the list. And that kind of just, like, came as we were writing. Like, yeah, we, we were just... We were, like, in the car talking, and you started talking about Valley of the Unicorns, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then she just wrote unicorns on the list, and I was like, yeah, unicorns for sure. Which you guys don't know what Valley of the Unicorns is yet, but... Trust us, it's going to be amazing yeah. when it happens. Come over for tea sometime, ask me about it, <laughs> ask her about it, we'll talk about it. We have to manifest Valley of the Unicorns. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, I guess we were talking about Valley of the Unicorns. I don't know, we were just writing things and we were like, and we want this, and this, and throw on a unicorn, and throw on a tiger, and throw on the moon, and throw on a mermaid. And, well, here's the crazy fucking thing is that we found all those things. Like, I found a tiger print. Okay, well, we're not there yet. We both went together, but then we wandered around the whole blue hangar, like, separately. And, like, basically didn't really find much of anything. Is that about right? I think we each found, like, a thing or two. Yeah. But we were kind of like, mm, haven't found it yet. Um, this place and is then, huge, though. Yeah, it's a huge, it's like a warehouse, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, the, the long bins are, like, the size of grocery store aisles. And uh, so we're, I kind of see where she is, and I go over to where she's hanging out, looking through bins, um to report that I haven't found much of anything. Uh, only, as soon as we're in the same area, it was like, I don't remember who spotted what first in what order, but together we found three stuffed unicorns all in the bin, like, or like the bins on either side of where we were standing when we like met up. And every time I snap, the whole thing shakes and I need to just not do that, but No, you need to add some special fun. effects like a pow. <laughs> I will. I will do that. Are we, do we have any of the unicorns? Oh, I see one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, these unicorns now live at the Citrine Palace. I think this was the third one that we found. The final one. That's strawberry corn, yes. <laughs> <laughs> strawberry corn. She's so cute. I think the other two are upstairs on the third floor. I think so. In the present tent. Because I think we decided the present tent really needed unicorns. Which is correct. It did. Yeah, so we found all these unicorns, like, right, bam, 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 
uh, together right after we like reunited in this magical place where we decided we were going to manifest together. And then like right after that, I found a little like Barbie doll mermaid tail. So that's mermaid checked off the list. And then I found a tiger print t-shirt that I still wear. And I was like, okay, that's tiger off the list. I don't remember what else we found. I know we found like... Mm, I, At least half the things. Specifically, we were for. I remember finding the garden hose. <laughs> yeah, I needed, was gonna say you did find the garden. We hose. needed a water hose, and I found like a really good one, like on a what do you call on it? A, thing that you roll a up. Reel yeah, or a something. reel. And I was like, oh well, you know, spool. I'll see how much it is on a spool. Yes, and it turned out to be ninety nine cents, and it had no leaks, and it was in perfect condition. Isn't that <laughs> ridiculous? I think it's ridiculous, but I also think it's great. But so that's always kind of been like since then, the unicorns have been one of the things that I've like held in my mind as like proof of magic and proof of manifestation. Like this house, well, this roommate, this house, and these unicorns are like three of my strongest pieces of proof for the existence of magic and the possibility of manifestation. And, and that's, that's all I have to say. I think the deck has more to say though. I feel like the deck has more. Mm-hmm. I just feel like the deck mm-hmm. wants to give at least one or two more I feel, cards. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like three what else pulls could, seems That's what I was thinking. Good so reason. I'm glad we're on the same page. Uh, I think you should cut the next one. All right. I feel like that one and this one yeah. will come out. This is like pretty much the one I was going to pick, actually. Okay. Hmm. Oh my god, I've been getting that one, too. Well. Two of Pentacles. Should we flip over this one now or wait? Yeah, flip it over. This right. is the second one you picked, right? Oh my god! The Eight of Cups has been coming up a lot lately also, so that's very interesting. Let's, uh, it's also very interesting that we get the Seven and the Eight of Cups, because the Seven is the manifesting and the Eight is the walking away from what doesn't serve you. Mm. And I think that's, like, also a super necessary part of manifesting, mm-hmm. is making, making the room space. for the manifestation. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that I haven't quite learned that all the way through yet and that I could stand (laughs) to repeat that lesson a few more times. So thank you, unicorns. I accept your assistance on this mission. Um, As for the Two of Pentacles, I'm still not really sure what to make of that. So I guess this is where we start reading the book. Would you like to hold up the Two of Pentacles so they can see it? Yeah. The first thing that stuck out to me was the little ships. Two of Pentacles. Talk about, and it's citrine, right? Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Talk about a multitasking juggling unicorn. Your workload is multiplying and your resources expanding, but you are still able to keep things running smooth, much like the infinity hand holding the citrine pentacles in place. If you have two awesome offers coming at you right now, don't worry. You will find the right magical balance. Keywords, multitask, multiplying, wealth, reversed, exertion, lack, scarcity. I'm going to go with all three of these are about manifestation, just from different, mm-hmm. there's, diff- there's different pro tips, basically. It's like about the, you know, the, the imagining part, the making space part, and the, the expansion and keeping, keeping up, keeping up with your own manifestations, basically, because it's like, you can imagine it and you can make the room for it, but can you, are you, like, part of making the room for it, right, is adapting to what you've manifested. Because a lot of times, like, this this actually, I mean, this happens. You can see this happen, um, say, to lottery winners all the time. Like, people get, quote-unquote, everything they ever wanted, and then their their whole life's turned upside down and <laughs> becomes a wreck because they don't know how to handle it. And I feel like this is about knowing how to handle it mm-hmm. because the power that we have to manifest is so out of this world that we really could knock ourselves on our asses and find ourselves mm-hmm. um, overwhelmed. But mm-hmm. this, I see this as both a reminder, both a, like a, a, a call to keep up, but also a reminder that we're capable of doing that. That's what I see. Should we read the other cards just to see what the book is like? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Can I say also something that's coming to me? I don't know if you agree with this or not, but um, with the Seven of Cups, I 
feel like it can have a lot to do with having so many options that you're like overwhelmed. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so that, Mm -hmm. with this and this, I really feel like is about like finding that balance to understand your, Mm -hmm. yourself and what you really need and are going to manifest, like finding that calm within you Mm -hmm. and getting focused and clear and like, yeah, I'm balanced. I'm ready for this. I can go for this now. Well, yeah. And I think part of it also is like, it's way easier to manifest seven things one after the other than it is to manifest seven things all at once. And like, you probably can't handle manifesting seven things all at once, and that's why the universe won't throw it at you. Because it's like, you don't know what you're asking for or getting yourself into, and I, as the I, I being the universe, see that you are still a child, and I honor that, and so I'm going to give you exactly what you can handle right now. And, you know, maybe that's fair. But maybe we can... One, you know, with awareness and apparently with the help of this deck, we can become aware of um, what imagined illusion, what imagined manifestations, or what, what potential manifestations would serve us best and serve our highest selves mm-hmm. most truly how to, you know, let go of what doesn't serve us and what we mm-hmm. need to let go of and make to make room for what will serve us best and how to and that's, you know, that's a cycle. That's a cycle and that's that's the mm-hmm. a cycle. <laughs> And, um, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Let's read the book. Oh, yes. Seven of Cups. So many sparkling choices. You are so confused. (laughs) I feel like this book is, like, patting me on the head, like, so many sparkling choices. You are so confused. I'm just like, thanks. I also (laughs) feel like it's like, there you go, Ella. You knew it. (laughs) Take time to step back. So, yeah. <laughs> Take time to step back so you can see the big picture. Figure out which one has the best value for your whole self overall. Mm-hmm. Don't let the idea of having it all whisk you into regret later. You can have a ton of things, but not be satisfied on a spiritual or emotional level. Make sure you know what you want. Quality over quantity. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Keywords. Bedazzled. <laughs> Illusion and fantasy. <laughs> mm. I had a bedazzled. Eight of Cups, which is, we, we got the pair. <laughs> the unicorn is at a turning point in his life and is ready to get his shit together. There's an asterisk instead of an I in the word shit, just so you know. <laughs> They've censored it. You've been through many experiences, good and bad, but none of them really satisfied you. Now you seek something deeper, perhaps a spiritual or creative journey. This will help you figure out what things bring more joy into your life. Oh, seeker, journey, withdrawal are the keywords for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel that. I also we didn't pull any major arcana cards, but I want to read about at least one major arcana card, and I really mm-hmm. kind of want to read about the Empress. Okay, I'm um, for it. Also, because like she's the manifestress that that births her manifestations. That is true. And then has to continue to nourish them afterwards as well. And that's that's a that's appropriate. We'll go with that. Oh my god! I didn't see this. The Three of Swords is a rainbow heart. That's even better than a... That's, like, way less intimidating than a normal Three of Swords. Not to say that it doesn't mean the same thing. I gotta say, I really love this deck so much more than I was expecting to. I do, too. Honestly, like, I know I'm the one who bought it, and, like, I should have been committed to loving it. But I was kind of, like, not sure how much I was gonna love it. And uh, I'm... That brings me to another point I feel like should be made, and I feel like the unicorns are helping with this also. Like, there are so many things in the world to acquire, and we don't need all these things. They weigh us down, and I feel like it is really important to tap in with yourself and be like, do I really want this? Do I really need this in my life? Before you, you know, put up your money and bring something home. Sometimes you, you look at something and you're like, yeah, I just want that. I mean, and then you get home and it's like, I don't really need this. My though. thought process was, if it turns out that it's not mine, 
It's not like I don't know anyone who loves crystals, unicorns, and tarot. <laughs> I really like this Three of Pentacles. It just feels very spacious. It's covering its eyes. It's so cute. These are way too cute. <laughs> Should I show them? I guess. I, I, I did just say in one of my most recent morning rituals that there's not a single card in the tarot that denies the tragedy of life. And so I think it's important um, to show the cards that do it blatantly, or that blatantly show it. Um, okay, so here's our Empress, which is just stunning. The Empress, Emerald. The Empress Unicorn rules with love and gives birth to desires and wishes. She is beauty, seduction, and abundance, enjoying all the luxuries life has to offer. Live your life to the fullest and enjoy the things that make you happy, because right now you don't have to worry about anything. Keywords, seduction, desires, luxuriate, reversed, halted, confusion, disoriented. Yeah, not the worst. Not bad. I would say if you've never read tarot before, you will want other resources, but this will get you by. This will get you through. I think I think if you've never read Tara before and this is what you feel called to, like I think this book would be enough to get you started on the right foot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, that said, I think you should also check out other reading resources, but um, there's so much to read, so that won't be a problem. And so much of it is available for free online. What all stones are included in the majors? Lapis, Emerald, Moonstone, Quartz, Herkimer, Ruby, Morganite, Pyrite, Tiger's Eye, Peridot. Peridot is the Hermit. Interesting. Not one I would have come up with. <laughs> Jade, Carnelian, Aquamarine. <laughs> Death is Black Tourmaline, Rainbow <laughs> Amethyst, Black Diamond. The Devil is Black Diamond. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> the Tower is Garnet. The star is turquoise, the moon is selenite, the sun is sunstone, of course. Mm -hmm. Judgment is fluorite, that's a great one, I really like that actually. Um, and the world is Larimar, I like that too. Like, I'm gonna really enjoy, I'm, I'll be really interested to work with this deck and the crystal tarot together. Mm -hmm. I think I yeah. really would like to do that. I've been wanting to do more readings where I like pull three cards from one deck and three cards from another deck and mm -hmm. then like read them as a pair of cards in a position. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. No, so sure. like say if I was doing a past, present, future reading, like pull one card from each of two decks for the past, mm -hmm. one card okay. from each of two decks for the present, one from each for the yeah. future. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant, but I wasn't yeah. sure. That feels really good to me. Do we have any, anything else we want to say or yeah. do? Nothing that comes to mind. Um, I think that's all that we have to say about the Crystal Unicorn Tarot. So thank you for joining us today. I think this was a lot of fun. I, I, I'm, I think I'm actually in love with this deck. And I was I was kind of iffy on it before I opened the box. I wasn't, I, I felt bad about it. But like I felt bad about feeling iffy. But I don't feel iffy now. I dig it. So uh, manifest. Um yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit that thumbs up button down below and the subscribe button also, I think it's down here. And uh, if you want to know when the next video comes out, be sure to hit that little, turn that little alarm bell on as well. And um, do let us know what you thought in the comments below, especially if you want more videos with Ella, because I'm always trying to convince her to come in my videos. So the more that you say that you like watching videos with Ella in it and that she's magical and a unicorn princess and a fairy and all the true things that are wonderful about her, the more likely I am to be able to convince her to come on another video with me sooner rather than later. Um, we were especially, we've already kind of, she's already agreed to do a, a video about how we manifested the Citrine Palace. And we even have our talking points all lined out because y'all sent me questions. And so I have the questions that we're gonna answer. Um, we just haven't sat down to do it. I've I'm been like, a lot in my defense. I'm <laughs> like, if I put this on film, can I can I get her to do it? <laughs> but no. Um, it's I, coming. <laughs> I honor your schedule and your needs. And I your appreciate that. And I also timeline. appreciate you waiting for me to be here to open this because this is great.
yeah, so we love you, and we'll see you again soon. And uh, have a wonderful, magical, fabulous, unicorn-filled um, day. And I hope that you get three wishes. Bye, guys.